Hey guys, welcome back to another video. As you can tell, it is build time once again. Today we're going to be doing a system around the Intel 30th Gen 3900K, so 24 cores, 32 threads, 5.8 gigahertz max turbo. It's a pretty wild processor. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different from most YouTubers that have done builds with this processor. I'm going to be using my trusty 3080 Tough Edition over a 4090. A couple of reasons behind this is one, I can't get a 4090 at the moment. And two is with the current pricing and availability of those, especially the 4080 series, looks like it's going to be over a thousand pounds too. If you want to build a system right now, realistically, you're going to be looking at the 30 series. So maybe the 3080 Ti, 3090, for example, but for sake of argument, we're going to use the 3080 today. Now, other things we've got to go alongside those parts. We've got the Aorus Z790 Master Motherboard. Did a video on this recently. It's absolutely ridiculous. If you want IO, then this is certainly the board to get. We've also got some Kingston Technology Renegade DDR5, their new RGB line. This is the 6400 mega transfers per second kit. So blazingly quick to go with our processor. I'll show you the other parts as we go throughout the video as well, but I'm gonna stop waffling and get building. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna get everything installed into our motherboard, then we can get that into the case. So as I mentioned, the motherboard we're using is the Aorus Z790 Master. And just look at that rear IO, just absolutely stacked. So let's get installing. So of course the processor, the 13900K, so 24 cores, 32 threads, absolute ridiculous. So let's get our socket open and get this installed. Give it a little wiggle. There we go. Keep that in case you need to RMA the board. So next up, the memory, which is the Kingston Fury Renegade DDR5. The fastest RAM that I've used to date. Certainly gonna be useful for our 3900K. So we'll open up the second and fourth dim slot. Line up the notch. That's one. And then the other. So our storage, this is the Fire Cuda 530. So Gen 4, one of the fastest drives that you can get at the moment is Gen 4 anyway and we're going to have to install this into our massive heatsink on the Z790 Master. So let's get this taken off. You can see how thick that piece of aluminium or aluminium is. Very nice. Take off the pill for our thermal pad. Now Gigabyte have also adopted the quick installation slots, so we don't need to actually screw anything down. Just push the latch till it goes down and then back. All done. Now we'll just take the thermal pad off the other side and then we can get that installed back on top. So cooler wise, we're using the Fantex Glacier 1 360. I've not actually used a Fantex cooler yet, so I'm uh, excited to look at this one, especially that kind of infinity screen design they have looks quite nice. So 320 mil fans. We've got this kind of infinity cooler top. We've got our mounting hardware, so it does support 1700 straight out of the box, also AM5 as well. So if you're using it on Team Red, you have got the options to do so. Essential stuff, some RGB, bits and bobs. And we've got some fr halo frames. There's quite a lot of bits and bobs to put together. So I've got our 1700 standoffs out and then our retention bracket, so we can bring our motherboard in. There we go. So then back on the other side and screw these standoffs in. I use the actual end of an iFixit kit to get those installed. It's the same width as the standoffs, which is quite convenient. Just a little bit fiddly to do where they're right up by the uh, VRM heatsink. So here is our radiator. So standard Aztec design has got pre-applied thermal paste, which is nice. As we are using 1700, I should just twist off and then twist on the other one. There's not that much difference. You can see where the threads are going to be, that it's just a kind of smoother design. There's no notch in it. So it will just allow you to uh, easily thread the thumb screws on the top. So we also need to think about how we're going to install it in the case as well. So I'm going to do it something like this, if you're looking at it from the side. So we need to make sure our cables are coming out at me so we can easily tuck them behind the motherboard tray. So before we put the fans onto the radiator, we just need to kind of look at the cables. It's a shame they don't come out the same side. It would make things a little bit easier, but we can always cable manage this with the fan that's next to it. So you could try and rotate the frame, but you'll find that you'll sandwich the cable between the next fan. So there isn't enough space to actually route it up through like that. So we'll have to keep them like this and then hopefully route the RGB cable with the fan that's next to it. Another thing to note, if you're gonna be using the frames, you don't need to use the washers. So 
they won't reach otherwise so just something to bear in mind to save you some hassle when you realize that they won't go through so that's now installed we've got all of our cables coming out for all easier cable management later on now these do daisy chain so that's a little bit more convenient save a bit of effort later on but we will need the little extension for the end one so something to consider so case wise we're going for the Fantex p600s this is a matte white edition it's a little bit different from the standard variant whereas you don't have an extra fan so i've added a corsair one um, back there and we have got three rgb fans in the front and if we remove this panel like so you can uh, you'll be able to see those in the front there and uh, give us a bit more airflow. Uh, same for the top as well. We've got a little panel we can take away. It's got some sound isolation on there. So if you're using like an air cooler, you could have all the air going through. You can leave that top on to make it a little bit quieter. But as we're going to be using a radiator in the top, we're just going to need to take that out. If we take this top panel off, we can see where we're going to install our radiator. Now I'm actually going to do this first. I'd usually do the motherboard, then put the radiator in. But as we have got some extra cables to manage with the 360 cooler, I think putting it in now is going to be a better idea. So. Now this case has a little mount, so if we undo these screws, this will then pop out. So you can install your radiator, then put it in separately rather than having to install it all into the case at once. Very cool. One reason I love Fantex cases. I'm going to use uh, one of the washers with the screws to get these installed, just to make sure it's going to fit, because otherwise these screws are going to be very close to popping through that grill. So if we use a washer, it's obviously not going to happen. There we go that's all installed now i've only used six screws obviously use all of them if you're going to be building this yourself but this is more than likely going to be taken apart after i built it so i'm only going to use six so bringing our case back in just put the pump block through and then lower the frame in now you can see there's little latches that this is going to go against so we're going to push that back so that fits in then do up the thumb screws so now we can put our motherboard in and let's get this lowered into position a lot of the high-end motherboards also have a screw hole under the m.2 heatsink so something to consider if you're going to be installing this you know for a daily system so that's now all installed now we can get our pump block on so let's take the cover off i did just put that back on to protect the thermal paste also when we put our infinity mirror logo on as well it does have holes for the hoses to come out the right hand side but you can obviously flip it around but for this sake i think we can get it around readable without a problem and we're going to get the big thumb screws out of the bag with the standoffs these are the standoffs of uh, previous generation intel boards so i'm installing these in an opposite order so i've done the top left and i've done the bottom right then i'm going to do the top right and then bottom left so they kind of go opposite each other that makes sure the pressure is nice and even and you don't have any uh, tighter spots on the cooler it's nice and evenly distributed so there's a little bit of peel on here then that just pops on magnets so as i mentioned the graphics card is the 3080 this is a tough edition from asus the oc 10 gigabytes model very kindly sent out by scan who are a uk retailer that sell anything and everything to do with technology if you can't buy it on their website it's not worth buying so they have a massive range and i will link them in the description and a big thank you again for them for sending this out now i'm not actually happy with the vertical mount i did try it so we're going to go for standard horizontal for this one but that will be you know no problem at all so i've taken off the bracket and let's get this lined up and clicked in there we go i'm just pushing up on the card as well while i install the thumb screws just counteract any sag that we might have and there we go so now we just need to get a power supply in do a bit of cable management and then we're done so the power supply for this build is the gx 1050 from cougar gaming i've used their 650 and the 850 so far this is a 80 plus gold power supply with a seven year warranty so we've got all of our cables in one bag obviously a power cable here is the power supply loads of connections for all of our devices to go into so cable wise i've got a 24 pin two eight pins for the eps so the motherboard are pcie which is a daisy chain so it's got two six plus two so we need two eights for our graphics card and of course a 24 pin we've obviously got a lot of connection points on this power supply so i'm going to be using i'll use the top ones for the eight pins and i'll use some at the bottom for the graphics card then sat is a different connection again power supply for this is a little bit different we've got a little bracket that we're going to install it into and then that will then go into the pc after so i'm going to put this with the fan side down we've got a nice gap at the bottom it's also filtered as well for fresh air to go through the power supply shroud is solid as well so there's no way airflow can get through so definitely power supply down for this scenario so that's those passed through and then it's just a case of doing the thumb screws up on the back so quite easy actually 
So just pass some cables through now. So I think for the graphics card, we'll use the little slot that's at the front there. We've got our 24 pin, which will come up through one of the sections here. And out like that. There's some tie downs in the back you can use as well to secure that. And we're gonna put our eight pins up through the top. These might be a little bit trickier as we do have to bend the cables down on themselves. So then bending that back on itself to go in at the top. A bit hard for you to see, I'm afraid. 24 pin does need a little bit of a bend on it, but we're fairly flexible cables, so that's not a problem. Both the eight pins will go straight up to the card, just like that. So all I have to do now is plug in the front panel and the USB connections and stuff like that, and then we can get on to testing. So we're into the BOSS, which is obviously a good sign. A couple of the fans aren't lighting up with the RGB, but that's something we can fix. Uh, we're now gonna go and enable XMP. So we're gonna press F2, and then go down to Extreme Memory Profile, brackets XMP, Profile 1. This will then set our memory to its rated speed, so 6400 mega transfers, which is obviously very high. So that will then restart, and then we hopefully should get into Windows, and we can play ourselves some video games. So jumping into our benchmarks, we're gonna do Shadow of the Tomb Raider first. This is on its highest preset at 1440p. So let's see what kind of results we're gonna get. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we've got 132 frames as an average. Now, don't forget that it's on the highest settings at 1440p, so should you wanna drop the quality down a little bit, you could hit that 144 hertz refresh rate so if you're using a decent compatible monitor so i think that's a pretty good result so now dirt 5 this is a random playgrounds game it's actually the same track that i used last time for the last build that i did and i do have an average of about 170 frames so that's real very good a little bit higher than uh, the last build i did which is a 5800 x3d never mind that but yeah <laughs> about 170 frames for dirt 5. So on to Apex Legends, this is at the highest 1440p preset. I actually have adjusted the Steam settings, so I get a, a higher FPS than 144. Otherwise it sticks to that. So, you know, that's good if you're using the G-Sync monitor, but not always good to see what kind of benchmarks and results we get. So we should now be able to see just how much we can get out of this. I'm not expecting uh, massive improvements over the last build that I did, as we are using the same graphics card, but our CPU will give us a little bit of an advantage. So as we're dropping in, we're getting about 150 frames. Obviously a lot going on though, so that will get a little bit higher when we reach the ground. So here we go. Oh, we seem to have fallen a long way. But now we're up to 230 frames. Just saw 229 there. Someone upstairs, see if we can push. down Let's kill someone so i think that's my first kill in this game so yeah averaging about 190 now 200 so very nice uh solid frame rate of our 3080 and 13900k so on to crisis a little bit annoying i can't seem to access the setting so this is running the last preset i used which was high and then um ray tracing on so just so you know, but I can't actually show you that because it seems to be a little bit bugged, but nevertheless, we shall uh, carry on and see what kind of frames we get. So averaging now at 169, nice. Not quite powerful enough, I don't think, to run like, can it run crisis mode all the time, um, the 3080, but still, you can get a very nice looking performing game, certainly with the 3080. About 160 frames for Crisis Remastered. So that came in at a 39,178 point run. Now, my 12900K does 26,400. So that's just absolutely ludicrous. Like the next place in the rankings is a 32 core 64 thread Threadripper, the 2990WX. And that's only at 30,000 points. This is a third of the cores and it's at 39,000. So alongside the multi-core Cinebench run, I also did the single core that came out at 2,233 points. I also did 3D Mark times so why we got a CPU score of 24,136. Quick side note, that's the standard time spy, not the extreme. Then I also did Blender, so we did Monster Junk Shop and the Classroom. These are a samples per minute, so we've got 284 for Monster, 171 for Junk Shop and 133 for the Classroom. 
And then finally Geekbench 5, we got a multi-score of 26,128 and then 2,265 on the single core. All these benchmarks are free pieces of software that you can download yourself. I'll leave all the links in the description box below so you can download them and see what kind of improvement gain you would get against what system you're using now. So there we go guys, that was my build of the 13900K with the 3080, absolutely blistering speeds as you can tell in the video, especially Cinewench, that 39,000 points. Absolutely ridiculous as uh, you can probably tell by my reaction to it as well. Um, a couple of thoughts of the build just before we end out the video. If you are going to build it in this case, they say white with black components and fan cables and things, I would recommend that you root into the headers at the bottom of the motherboard. Just so it makes it look a little bit cleaner than using the top. Uh, especially the black stands out against the white quite a lot so just a little bit of uh, advice to keep it a little bit more clean the power supply cables as well from the gex 1050 not really that much of a fan of the way that those cables ribbon i'd rather if they were like kept solid rather than kind of pulled apart just makes the 24 pin look a little bit untidy as well performance wise obviously the system is redonkulously fast temperature wise we saw a high of 86 degrees on the cpu package with the gaming benchmarks that's using hardware info um, but we did see a high of 96 when we went over to cindy bench obviously very intensive program so you do expect a lot more heat um, but i would like to test this combination with not two nth2 at some point i think it's really going to drop the degrees so i will add that in the pinned comment when i get around to that so you can have a look see uh, how it compares graphics card wise the tough 3080 is always cool so a high of 61 so nothing to really write home about there and then the m.2 heatsink that got a bit of aluminium kept our m.2 at 42 degrees so doing a really good job there um, i did kind of laugh at the height of it to begin with but you can tell it obviously does its job very well i have swapped the rear fan you might notice it's not the corsair one i originally installed this is a glid stellar couldn't get the iq software to work i think it's more my hub than anything else um, i've used it numerous times plugging things in and out and i think it's starting to go up the ghost so swapped out with one of those fans are a really good kind of go-to if i need just an rgb fan that's why that's different also if there's any other software you'd like me to implement for future videos and do let me know um, cinebench is a good go-to but there might be something a little bit more specific you'd like to see results for so do let me know in the comment and I'll make sure to implement it next time. But I think that's pretty much it for this video. So I hope you've all enjoyed it. I'll leave links to all the products that you've seen in this video down below. Obviously a big thank you to all the companies that have sent parts out for this video. If you enjoyed this video, then get subscribed and ding the bell so you don't miss a future one. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.